It's Madden NFL 24, and the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns, coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Cleveland Brown Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon, joined as always by my partner, Charles Davis. Uh, Charles, these Browns, no other way to say it. They took a step back last year. You know, what do you think that they need to do to get back to the playoffs while competing in a tough AFC North? They need to get back to the identity that their head coach established a couple of seasons ago. A hard running game, consistent play from their quarterback, and then they have new management on the defensive side of the ball. They'll try and get after you in the pass rush. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. Twenty-two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance. And off we go from Cleveland. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And a quarterback, a longtime signal caller of the National Football League, former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco. Remember when the conversation was, is Joe Flacco elite? Well, at one point, he was elite enough to not only win a Super Bowl, but be named the MVP of that game. And for a time, one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Again, they turn to forward. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On first down, Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku, and he goes out right around the 39. Ball on the 39, here's second down and seven. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted. The running game, and guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. This is Ford, and he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. 
Setting up to throw, Flacco. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. They run with Ford. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. That's to the right side and complete to Njoku. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Chance are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Flacco throwing quickly out wide. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And now we've got a third and goal situation. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Third and goal, Flacco. And that's going to be caught for the Browns touchdown. Afternoon. That was a big throw right there on third and goal. And the defense has to be prepared for you to throw the ball on third and goal. Because really, second down, second and goal, that's your play action time, and you're not sure whether they're going to run it or throw it. Third down, you're usually sure they're probably going to pass it. Even more impressive that they got it done. And on the opening drive of the game. Extra point good by Hopkins, and that makes the score 7-0. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. On the return, here's Tyler Scott. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Now a run on first down is not gonna get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. Overall, I'd have to say that was just really good team defense because to me, you can't pin that one on the running back. He had no shot there. He had a man in his face immediately. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Now Fields. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because in the defense got it. They were already within a shadow of the goal. And then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Foreman powering ahead. 
And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Here comes the Bears punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he'll just punch it out of there, and it's not a great kick. Here's more on the return. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They've got the 7 0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. On the ground, it's Ford. And they'll wind up giving this one all the way down inside the 20. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. To the left side, and complete for Amari Cooper. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a second and two. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. This will be caught at about the five. And yeah, the Browns are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. <laughs> to pass, Flacco. Looking in zone. Incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time they were up to the challenge. A line of scrimmage once again, the five as they get ready for second and goal. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he will push his way forward dead about the three yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Here's Flacco. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Marquise Goodwin from three yards out. And the Browns lead this now. 13 nothing here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Well, this has been a flawless start for them. They score, they get the stop, and they score again, Charles. Complimentary football at its finest. You just mentioned how they got it done. They scored. The defense got the ball back for them. They score again. That's the way you win ball games. Hopkins with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. 
And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. And this will be a Bears first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll go again with Herbert. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here's second and 10. Read option, here's Herbert. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now it's Fields. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out. But his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. On first down, Fields. And he's got this down to the 35. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. On first and 10, it's Herbert. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. From the gun, here's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. Fields to Komet there for a Chicago first. Nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. One play action. Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run here with Herbert. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. On second down, a run with Herbert. 
And he pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Here's Fields. Escaping the pressure right. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have got it back to within a score. And talk about built to run the football. Whether you're calling it on design running plays, or him breaking out into the open field after trying to pass the football. Justin Fields knows where the end zone is. Eight rushing touchdowns last season. Only Jalen Hurts had more. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that'll make our score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now Flacco. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. The good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Now Flacco. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Ford. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. I think that call was made not so much to try and get the first down, although <laughs> they would have taken it if they could have gotten it, but to give their punter a little bit of space and try and help out their defense. Yeah, they got the safe completion on third. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. To return is Taylor. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return, and the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. Is that what he he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> a good position to be in here, second and inches. Herbert powering up the middle. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. My high school football coach was very fond of saying, you've got to meet force with force. And on a short yardage running play, that's what you're going to encounter. And how about them picking up the first down on that one?
On first and ten, here's Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second down, six. Back to throw, Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Moody. And Moody going to have a Bears first down as he'll get this down to the 35-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. They'll fake the handoff, now Fields. And he will find the open man, it's DJ Moore. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Fields throwing again. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Able to push his way through. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. To throw his fields. Flush to his right. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Four yards there as they let him out of the pocket, and he got enough for the first. Fields. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. Open man left side. It's the tight end, Tunyon. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. This has been a long drive. You gotta figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Here's Fields. Now we're behind his man, incomplete. Fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Santos' kick is up and through, and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in this second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three.
Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. Now, these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Flacco to throw again on second down. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Looking for two yards here on third down. Flacco. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gets him a first down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now a second and 10. Here's Flacco. Deep ball for Goodwin. Be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 37. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Partner, that's excellent timing right there. Breaking off the route and being able to hit it right when he stops. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Now a give, right side, four. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Kyler Gordon stopped that play before it ever got going. Great job. Hey, we often talk about defensive ends setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a cornerback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. On second down, it's four. And he'll work it inside the 29-yard line. 65 yards rushing for him now to this point. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four-down territory, that really opens things up for you. Draw play to Ford. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Well, they'll say no to the 46-yard field goal try. They're going to go for it. They'll try and run for it. Executed fourth down conversion. Yeah, I know this will surprise you. But I've actually done a little bit of reading lately, 
and all the analytics say that you should go for it more on fourth down, I think someone has referred back to their analytics coach. Maybe he's got a pipeline into the booth because that was a really good play call. Throwing here on first down, Flacco. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Setting up to throw, Flacco. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now it's Flacco. He'll find Goodwin here on the right side. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Flacco from the gun. Gets him back at the 14. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. This a 31-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. now to kick it off. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And the Bears going to get one more possession in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. Fields on first down, eluding the pressure right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. Well, they got the lead, but it's certainly not a big one. And how do you keep control of that lead? Certainly not by that last play there. They gave up a big sack on the first play of this drive. Now it's double the distance to the first down marker. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
One touchdown is the difference. 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. But the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because Fields hit and the ball is loose. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you noted. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They've got the ball in a great spot here, already inside the red zone following that fumble recovery. So the fumble recovery, now Flacco to throw. Wide open, Amari Cooper. Touchdown, Browns! Three touchdown passes now for Joe Flacco. And the Browns are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And that's a drive that makes everyone happy on that bench because they accomplish exactly what they set out to do. Take care of the football, eat up a little clock, end up in the end zone. Now they've got to cushion for the rest of the game so they didn't just help themselves offensively, they helped their defense out as well. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. A nice tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. The Bears offense ready to get going again. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles, but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Now a first down throw, Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. So the completion good for just three. And that'll make it second down. Give to Foreman now on the option. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Fields. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. They run it on first with Foreman. He's got it to the 43 here. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Second and six. Now it's Fields. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Getting set to go again, we get a look at Amari Cooper as he heads back out there now. He's been his typical solid and reliable self, hasn't he, Charles? When you have that go-to receiver that you can count on in the situation where you absolutely have to have him, there's nothing better for anybody who's throwing the football. But the best part is the payoff, two touchdowns already, that's the bottom line when you throw the ball to a guy. Absolutely. Not over 100 yards right now, but he does have the two touchdown catches. Second down and four. Operating off play action. Flacco. And this one is incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. He finds his man complete. That's four. Now this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. They'll start out here with the option left. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Beating him there with his legs, 21 yards, first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. This is Foreman draw play. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And while the guys with the ball are having a whole lot of fun keeping it on the ground, the guys on the opposite side, they are having zero fun. They've been getting pushed around the entire game and haven't found an answer yet to slow down the running game. Foreman's going to get it again on second down. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Foreman will try to pick it up. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. On first down, it's Fields. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. Mark that as a gain of 16 to set him up first and goal. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far on this drive. This offense on the march. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run here with Foreman, and he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at him with the same play. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Justin Fields with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears have cut it back within a score. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in Touchdown City. Now the point after try for Santos. He's got it, and it's 24-17. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was all capped off by the Justin Fields touchdown run. He took it in himself. To the touchdown. Here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Man open, it's Goodwin. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Flacco throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku, and it's third and four. Flacco looks to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And they work this well up field across the 45. A gain of 22. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep with the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. this they'll try the option left side and a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40 yard line 
12 more yards there and another first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it, but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. They'll try the left side. Four. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So many offense want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. To pass, Flacco. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Bears now ready to take over again. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play multiple plays that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. On the option right is Fields. But I think the ball's out. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. Well, obviously, you never want to fumble, but if you do, good to be towards the sideline and saves them a possession. Saves the embarrassment, saves it going down on the play sheet as a turnover, but I still think it should go to the defense, even if they don't recover it. If you give up the football, you gave up the football. Eh, uh, agree to disagree, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell what I played? Yeah, you played defense. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. I took a shot. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. After another impressive run, the question has to be asked, how do you slow these guys down running the football? I think they're going to try and get more people to the point of attack, try and get more people to the line of scrimmage, almost use a variety of run blitzes in order to try and get it done. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB, and he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Fields. There he goes, left side. Now he's into the clear again. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, 37 yards. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. 
And maybe the defense got so caught up in him throwing the football, they forgot he can take off, too. And you often hear about the quarterback being the unaccounted for guy as a runner. Well, even on a passing play, he's unaccounted for as a runner, and he turned it into a nice game. A very nice run, and it turns in to six points. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And an important one that is, as we are all tied now early in this fourth quarter. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown. All tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. stars and he came through with a nice catch right there the big play to start him out has him at the 45 already passing play Flacco and he couldn't get that one to his man short of him it's low and incomplete Amari Cooper his intended receiver and that'll bring up second down Now Flacco. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Then we start looking for big time corners. We're going to start with athleticism, but without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. So now third and ten. They had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion sets. Now Flacco. He finds his man complete. It's four. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. They go in the empty set there. Five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in to block. But in this case, he's lined up to the right. And he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion calls defensively. And it turns into a big play. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Now a give right side, four. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. That runs successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it, and that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. 93 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Second and three from the nine. Flacco. This is caught. And the Browns are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Ford diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just 
see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Extra point good by Hopkins, and they will take a seven point lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a one yard touchdown run. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On second down, here's Foreman. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Again, it's Foreman. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Two yards to go, second down. On the option to give to Foreman. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you could have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Nice pickup, 10 yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone who has the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. And he ran right through one tackle as he fights forward for a gain of seven. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Equinemius St. Brown, and it's third and short. Fields now to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 21 yards there on third down. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Here's Fields. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver. 
receiver more. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. And this is just a little touch pass. They send the receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now, it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice, consistent gain. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. To the air again, Fields. There's Mooney with another catch. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the four, this is second down and one. Here's Fields. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Mercedes Lewis from four yards out, and the Bears are an extra point away from drawing level. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Santos now to add the PAT. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And now the Browns coming out on the field. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. They will start this drive with four. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. 101 yards rushing for him now to this point. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. From the 43, it's second and three. And right side, they're going to go option here. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Another try, second and ten now. This is Ford. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at about the Bears 42. Yeah. 
Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. He finds his man complete. It's four. And he's going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. On the ground, it's Ford. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Again, they turn to four, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. Zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. Here's first and goal. Hands it off out of the gun. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want to. <laughs> without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So now it all comes down to Dustin Hopkins. This to almost certainly win the football game. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And I tell you, when it comes to needing a field goal in closing seconds pressure situation, there's something to be said for having a veteran kicker trot out there. Agreed. It's so nice to have someone you can rely on, someone who you know has done it before. And this guy's as cool as they come, isn't he? the made field goal for three Hopkins now to kick it off and he returns this to the 22 this is first and ten and one last throw here for Fields now a desperation throw deep downfield and it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over.
Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play, and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.